Okay, well, this is the last module of startups. It's amazing two days have gone by and nothing exhibits the passion of this country like bullfighting. So we're in the perfect place and now we're gonna have the finalists from the internet mass market group present. From there, hopefully, we're gonna get the winners. And it's my honor to present to you the moderator of this module. Sergio Perez is a telco expert, a serial entrepreneur, and now he is in the department for venture capital at La Caixa. Ladies and gentlemen, join me in welcoming Sergio Perez. Hi. Good afternoon, everybody. Are you ready to see the, a fantastic presentation of the companies of the startups finalists in the category of digital solution for smart market? So now I'm going to introduce them. First of all, uh, I would like to introduce a company who helped us to deal with social advertising. The name of the company is ADS Murai. Please. Hello. Good afternoon. My name is Otto Wüst. I'm CEO of Atsmurai. Uh, companies, customers use uh, Atsmurai to scale their advertising uh, on social networks. It's relatively easy to start advertising on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, but as you scale your operations, it gets harder and harder and harder. There is uh, quite a challenge to optimize all the targets that you can target with uh, these social networks uh, to uh, uh, specify which is the right budget for your target, uh, what is the right bidding, when is the right timing to place your ads, uh, how do you A-B test such large amount of ads. In addition to that, um, advertisers have been exposed to a number of interfaces the uh, Facebook Ads Manager, the New Ads Manager, the Power Editor, the um, Business Manager, the uh, Twitter Ads Manager, the Google something. So this is high complexity, and these interfaces are usually um, optimized to the long tail advertisers. So we have come up with a solution, a simple tool, we've called it Katana. Uh, what we do is we interface with all the social networks to help companies create and optimize the ads. We also interface with the actual uh, advertiser systems to do so. Uh, we offer a SaaS and managed service as a business model. We've been quite successful with a number of uh, global companies. Um, we are really uh, having very good traction. We target 5 million euros of revenues by the end of the year. We did half a million this month. Uh, we can continue to keep growing because we are addressing a very large market, which is also expanding very quickly. So there's plenty of room for us to grow at very high speed, over 12% monthly uh, growth we are seeing. We're focusing a number of industries, retail, e-commerce, and CPG, and at the same time, a number of territories. We have the right team in place. Uh, we are building up this team with new executives. We are hiring, so come to me if you are talented and want to join one of the fast-growing startups in social advertising. What's next? Well, I invite you to come to our demo to see the actual product, to see how we do things. Uh, we are very likely opening a round of financing uh, in 2016, so if you're an investor, please come check on us. And to the jury, uh, please uh, take into account our efforts and vote for us to be the finalists or the winners in the contest. Thank you very much. Thank you, Otto. One, you. one moment. Jury, do you have any question for Otto? Um, uh, yeah, uh, what, you, say, you say you're a SaaS company. What do you base your price on? Number of, adver of uh, advertisement push, number of users? It's a percentage uh, on advertising spend. It scales as a tiered model. So the more you spend or the more you invest into advertising, the less we will charge you in trenches. 
just on that note, what are the gross margins on the revenue figures that you mentioned? I can't hear you, sorry. What are the gross margins on the, on the revenue that, that you displayed? Uh, well, essentially, we start uh, with 5% uh, on advertising spend for a SaaS model and 15% on managed services model. That scales down. You work with uh, uh, Facebook and uh, already Twitter or only Facebook? Uh, we, we are operational with Facebook and Instagram. We were the first company in Spain to launch Instagram ads. Uh, and we are going to be operational with Twitter and YouTube uh, uh, by the end of uh, this, this uh, quarter. Thank you, Otto. Thank you very much. Thank you. Clicker? Guys, I have a problem. I would like to paint my house. And it's really difficult to find a good painter at a good price. But I think that I have the solution. And the solution is Abitissimo. Can I have the... Here. So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Jorge Cienfuegos. I'm Chief Brand Officer at Abitissimo. Abitissimo was founded six years ago in 2009 in the construction industry. So let me show you a picture. This picture is 100 years old, but it could be a recent one since our business, the construction industry, hasn't changed too much in the last century. We at Abitissimo believe the change has to happen, as we've seen in other verticals like travel, like real estate. We want to, be, to bring Atavitissimo, the construction business, to the next level, bring it to the 21st century by reinventing the way professionals and consumers connect to each other, by, for instance, including customer reviews in our profiles, in our professional profiles. So let's see in detail how does Abitissimo work. First, we have a free of charge platform dedicated to homeowners when they, where they can get inspiration as the community regarding the jobs and finally, find the right professional for executing their project. The objective of this platform is to help homeowners to create their dream home. And on the other hand, we offer a service to our more than 15,000 professionals in order to get new customers. The service is based both on a freemium subscription and also on lead generation. Many professionals tell us, literally, that Abitissimo changed their life because it saved their business at a very difficult time of crisis. So today, Abitissimo is present in eight countries, in Spain, Italy, and Portugal in Europe, and in Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, Chile, and Argentina in South America, which means a huge potential for home improvement, for home, home improvement market. We uh, estimate the opportunity in 160 billion euros and even if in the last years we have new online competitors and a very well-established offline competition, we know Abitissimo, Abitissimo will succeed in the home improvement market. Why? First, in terms of traffic, we are a clear leader in every single country, in Spain, Italy, Brazil, and Mexico, and because of our strong and proven business model. In terms of revenue, we are profitable since 2012. We have seen a growth of more than 50% year on year during the last four years, and a run rate of 8 million euros for 2015. Then, in terms of diversification, both in terms of countries, we are profitable in every single country, and in terms of source of revenue, we have a good balance between the revenue generated by subscriptions and the revenue generated by the leads. Last but not least, our people, the founders team. We have a good balance between experience into the internet industry and the construction industry. What are we asking for today? We are forecasting a revenue of 25 million euros for 2018. And for that, we ask for three to five Series A funding in order to develop our marketing channels and to invest in mobile technology. Thank you very much. OK, so now it's time for questions. Yuri? Hi. Um, obviously, construction and building people's homes has very big implications. How do you control the quality of, of some of the leads that you're providing on the construction side? We control the quality because every single professional 
pays for the lead, so they try to do their best with the customer. We don't have to go after the client to ask if the service was good, since the professional are paying for it, so they pay a lot of attention into giving the best service they can, because they, have, they feel that they are paying for every single euro they are putting under the lead. And, sorry, what's your acquisition uh, channel for professionals? What is your acquisition? What do you get to professional? How do, how do they know about the platform? Yeah. We're starting uh, getting professionals from uh, offline, offline media. Um, the word of mouth works very well and through associations, for example. But also our consumer marketing does an effect on professionals since we have been doing offline campaigns. Some of our search campaigns are also uh, taken by professionals. Thank you again. What why did you decide to pursue home services as a market and not be more horizontal, like Thumbtack in the US, as you mentioned? Uh, the reason why we focused on uh, home services was to have a better control of the quality of the product we offered and a better control on the professional that were offering this service. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> OK, now, who in the audience has a child from two to six. Please, have your hands. OK. So I'm sure that all of you want that your children learn languages. And it's very difficult now. But now we have a company, Monkey Moon, who is going to help your children. Monkey Moon. It's my niece. She's three years old and Spanish is like me. You can imagine how much I worry about her English. So I found her some apps to learn it, but she found them extremely boring. That's why we created Monkey Mon, language learning for kids. We launched last year, and we've been having great traction. Over 1.5 million organic downloads and 4 million, including pre-installations, with a steady growth 10% month over month. Now, the retention rate is also twice the industry benchmark. Look at the App Store. We've been number one. We're number one in the US. We're number one in Europe. We're number one in Asia. And look at this, because every single product that we build has been number one somewhere around the world. I don't think a lot of educational companies can say this. If you want to know why, let me show it to you. Does this look like education? This is fun. <laughs> and I know most of you are thinking, well, is this just another startup trying to gamify education? Well, we are not. What we're doing is edifying games. We're edifying games with the same goal but a different approach. And with the help of great companies, like Google, we partnered with them for the last Google I.O. and built exclusive content together with Disney and Nickelodeon. Or Oxford University Press, we signed a few weeks ago with them to co-develop an application together. There is more great companies coming on the pipeline, like Vodafone for distribution, Rosetta Stone for co-development, or Half to Muslim for content licensing. The kids love us. The average session length is over three times the industry benchmark. The industry is loving us. Just last year, Google gave us an award. They say, best Android app of 2014. Press is loving us as well. They know Monkey Moon is the future of education. Now, our business model is very simple. We have a set of applications, premium, $3 per app, or a subscription option, where the parents pay a monthly fee, and they have on a weekly basis progress reports and new content to teach their children. Cristobal Viedma, twice startup founder, and I was the head of product on Viki, a $200 million exit. My co-founder, Marieta, she was the founder of a chain of educational centers in Spain and has over eight years of experience in education. 10% growth month over month and over 4 million installations, we have great traction. With three times the industry benchmark, in session length and twice in retention rate, we have a great content. But the most important thing, millions of kids around the world are learning a second language now, 
have an opportunity to bring the, close, the world closer together, starting here right now, in Madrid, with my niece. Come on, LA! Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, Cristobal. Okay, again, it's the time of the jury. Questions, please. Uh, congrats, uh, good numbers. Uh, can you be more precise on the retention numbers? You say twice industry standard, but what does it mean? Like uh, after like a month or two months, how many active users do you still have? It means like when we look at the educational uh, category and for kids, it's about like 10% right now. The, retention, the monthly retention rate is very hard to retain children. Like when it comes to like they don't have access to, to the tablet as much as they want. We have over between 25 to 30 percent like the next day retention. It's, Twice. Yeah. How many monthly active users do you have now, and, and how, how much time is the average child spending in the app per month or per week or whatever? Uh, as I available? said before, it's over three times the benchmark. Uh, the benchmark is one minute, that's the average session length. For our applications, is the, the lowest one is three minutes. The latest subscription platform we launched is 11 minutes. Can you tell us a little bit how you track the efficacy of the app? How much are you know, children learning and how is the, the technology sort of learning from what the children struggle with? We're actually, tra we're actually tracking everything that ch uh, the children is doing, whether he's like doing the right answer, the wrong answer, how much time they're spending and so on. We send all the data to the back end. We calculate the level and we add the difficulty of the level uh, of the lessons to the children's educational level. Um, and also, we are actually like working with the schools, and we publish two white papers showing like this works better than traditional methods. Okay, thank, thank you, you very Mr. much. Wall. Thank you. I'm using Google Maps, but it doesn't work. Why? Because I'm inside a building. Well, I don't know. I'm going to ask Situm to explain why. Thank you. So, well, I'm Victor, and I will introduce you Situm. Uh, did you have any problems finding uh, this venue when you came here? If, if so, I guess that you just open Google Maps and find the directions, and you are here. But uh, do you have any problems finding this stage or any other inside this building? Then you actually had a problem because GPS doesn't work inside this building, so you can't get directions nor the maps of this venue. So we got the solution for that, this our indoor location platform. How, how does it work? First, you just have to upload your, your floor plan of your venue to our website. Then you have to calibrate, does it work around uh, with our application? And third, does it, that's the magic. Then your visitors will be able to have a uh, Google Maps-alike application and navigate indoors, find points of interest, and so on. If you are the venue owner, you will be able to access to uh, any kind of data about your visitors. And that's the, the platform. Um, the market for this platform is, is, is going to be huge. Um, there's going to be a growth rate of over 40% for the next years. And the target market that we are addressing is hospitals, malls, and worker tracking applications, which is going to be 3 billion global. Uh, our business model for this is a license, well, it's a platform as a service model, and the licenses are per venue for hospitals and malls and per user in worker tracking. What about our competitors? That's the, the most interesting part. They all follow the law of devices. That's it. The more devices I install in the building, the better it works. But we broke, break this rule. We don't need any devices. And we achieve a higher precision than most of those competitors which need these devices. We, we will be the Google Maps for indoors. For this, we are mapping the biggest and most visited places in the world. Uh, the team behind CITU is a senior business executive, three experts in mobile robotics, which are the founders, and a venture capital expert in technology transfer. We are already in many countries, and we have 25 hospitals here in Spain. Uh, in the location will be the, the next big thing, as it, it can be seen by the recent operation by the big players, for example, Apple, both with Island, uh, a year and a half ago. 
And in order to keep the play in the first line of this race, we need about two millions. And that's it. I hope that uh, next time you came to this venue, you can download C2 Maps, locate yourself, and find directions to the places you are looking for. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Now, Yuri, please. Questions? Uh, yeah. Uh, how does it work? Is it magic? Because uh, you say without any device, you are more precise as the other with device. So what's, what's the magic? That's the magic behind this. It's uh, a sensor fusion algorithm. It's based on Wi-Fi, I Bluetooth, if there is. But the real thing here is our indoor navigation, uh, inertial-based navigation inside the building. We record magnetic field interferences inside the building, and then the, we record the steps of the uh, people who's using this. So that's why we, we achieve this precision without devices. Any other question from the jury? No? OK, so you. thank you. <laughs> now it's time for a startup who <laughs> developed a guest expedition apps for hotels. The name of the startup is Stay Up. Hi, my name is Joan Yadó. I am the co-founder of Stay, and I'm here to tell you one story. Six years ago, my brother and I went to a resort, and we had so much fun but we discovered how old-fashioned hotel operations are. Let me give you a couple examples. First, you have to do lines for everything and wait in line for everything. Second, you get these brochures that are outdated and that no one reads. Third, when they want to communicate with you, they use paper messages to talk to you. And four, and my favorite, if you ask for any de recommendation on destination, they write things on paper maps and give them to you. And we thought we could change all this with smartphones, so we could connect in real time hotels and guests. Six years later, we're doing pretty good. We are in more than 20 countries, and top national and international companies are trusting Stay as their main mobile solution. These companies belong to a top group, the top 250. But this is just a small piece of the pie. There are thousands of hotels out there that are small chains or independent hotels, and what happens to them? They will all want an app. But there are just too many apps, and most of them are never used. So our guess is that no one will use them. Our solution will launch just one app, just one app that aggregates all those properties into one solution so we can become the guest experience standard. I'll tell you how this works. Every hotel goes to our website. They fill all the information and services, and they publish it to the app. So when a guest goes to a hotel, they just need to open the app, the app geolocates and detects the property, and the app becomes the hotel app until they check out. Now, let me tell you how we treat both targets. We have great companies like Melia they, that they need they have their own app on the App Store because of the brand. So they will pay us monthly fees. On the other side, we have the Stay app that will aggregate all those other properties, and they can use our service for free forever. And you might ask, why free? Because we have a vision that each hotel will only have one app access. And thankfully, these uh, great companies are going to sustain our business model because they are paying us increasing monthly fees. And as I was saying, we have one vision that each hotel will have just one app access. And if we become that app, all the other key players in the industry will need us to sell their products and services so we can become a digital hub. And yes, we know it's really tough to become a standard on the industry. There's full of large players. But as you can see, there's a spot on the interest day phase of the life cycle, and we want to fill that spot. Finally, on the financials, we raised money in the beginning of the year. It's been a great year. We've grown 50%, and we are break even. But if we want everyone to know who we are and what we do, we need money to invest in sales and marketing. That's why we're looking for a million euros. Thank you so much. This was Stay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Yuan. So now, time for questions. Thank you. Why did you choose to tackle this problem in terms of the other startups that you could have started? Why, why this specific problem? Uh, we've been doing this six years, 
and when we launch independent hotel apps, no one would download them. And people just download apps for the long term. So if you have a Melia hotel, they have 30, 350 hotels worldwide, you're going to keep the app, you're going to use the app. But if you go to an independent hotel, regardless of the quality of the hotel, it's really, really tough to get people to download the app. That's why we think the future is an aggregation app. Do you plan to make revenue, extra revenue through like affiliation because through the app? I, I'm sorry, I don't, I don't. Do you plan to make extra revenue through affiliation, like selling extra stuff through the app or not at all? I don't understand. I don't understand. Okay. I'm sorry. I can approach you if you want. It's a, it's a bit of a related question. Are you thinking about, you know, you mentioned there's so many players in the landscape doing different things, be it reviews or bookings, et cetera. Do you plan on any partnerships with any of those players or expanding sort of what you can do within the app? The thing is, uh, there are hundreds of companies doing apps for hotels, but white label, always with the brand. And uh, no, no one is trying to do the one-up thing. Uh, but in the future, we might be able to collaborate with existing players because we can use SDKs and our, this service can be inserted into other apps, into other players. Okay, thank you, Johan. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, I'm sure that all of you enjoy a lot yesterday in the South Sami party. Yes, but all of you know where to go. But sometimes you don't know where to go or what to do. So the next company, Exceed, is going to develop an app for nightlife. And Matia is going to present the company. Matia? Where is it? This one. Good afternoon. My name is Matia, co founder of Exceed, and we are a team of nightlife management experts. We answer the question where should I go out tonight? And to help me explain you why our users log in to Exceed every single day, I would like you to think about traveling, or hotels, or even restaurants, and think about how the access to these services has changed over the last decade. Well, there is a huge segment in the entertainment industry that hasn't changed yet. Nightlife. We're talking about people, mostly 18 to 30, that love to have fun, dance, and meet new people. And they all still suffer from the same difficulty of discovering and booking nightlife events. Facebook, PR's local magazine, None of these channels provide a clear and simple solution to the question, where should I party tonight? And we believe going out should be fun and spontaneous. For this reason, we have created a website and a mobile app that lets you discover the best events in town, book them in one tap, and cut the line at the entrance by simply showing your smartphone. But there's something more. There is a huge industry behind nightlife events. And all the organizing a party may sound like a fun job, Believe me, it can be a hell of a nightmare. Your venue can sell out one night and be completely empty the day after, and you have no efficient tools to analyze these results. That's why we've come up with the final solution. We called it Nightcraft. It helps clubs save time when managing promoter, customers, and bookings, gain insights through an advanced dashboard of real-time analytics, and increase profits thanks to a set of innovative marketing tools. And it is through this nightlife tailored solution that Exceed takes a step away from its competitor's biggest barrier, scalability. And thanks to our freemium model, we're able to lock in our B2B customer at a staggering pace and let them boost our B2C growth by converging their own network into ours. And I won't spend too much time explaining you how big this market is, but just think that a city like Madrid hosts more than 100 clubs and 700,000 potential users. And we are ready to monetize on each and every of these potential attendees. We get per head commission on entries, and we get transaction fee on every single online sale. So at this point, I guess you may be asking yourself, does this really work? Our friends and family, they thought we were crazy. So we started with no initial investment. And guess what? More and more party lovers started using Exceed. Until we closed our 550,000 euro seed round this summer, and crossed the one million reservation worldwide last week. We are going to change the way people live the best nights of their lives. I promise you, Exceed will become the norm. We have the team, there is a pain, we have a solution, we have a beautiful product, and we have traction. So if you would like to take part in this nightlife revolution, please come and speak with us. The first beer is always on us. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Matia. Okay, so now, Julie. Thank you so much, and congrats on, on the great traction. Um, a lot of going out and events is about the exclusivity, and sometimes, you know, lines and selling out are actually part of the marketing almost. So how do you tackle that to make sure that you have the highest quality events and, and availability on the platform as you scale? Yes, um, sure. Well, we do a filter with clubs and event organizer to begin with, so it's not an open platform. Every time we open a new city, we first meet with club owners so that we always have the highest quality. Uh, this way, we can always offer to our users the best uh, events in town. We're also targeting nightlife only, so it's a niche market, and this way we can always keep the quality high as we're not getting into bar, pubs, and restaurants. We want to focus on something. Uh, people between 18 to 35 go out more than once per month. They need an app to know every time they travel where they can go and find the clubs they like with the music, see if their friends are going, and also be able to access these good quality events in an easy way. So split payments with their friends for bottle service, having tickets and information straight in the palm of their hand rather than having to go in the street and find out from flyers or Facebook. This is pretty much what we're doing. And on that note, what level of curation are you having regarding the clubs and the parties? Are, are you rejecting a certain percentage of, of clubs and parties that you come in contact with or, or reach out to you? I didn't, I didn't understand. Are, are, are you rejecting some of, the, some of the parties and clubs that you interact with uh, if they're not good enough or, or you think they're not high enough quality for your okay. audience? Okay, well, in case uh, the things go that way, we can always take them off from our app but keep them using our software. So they can keep using all the software solution we're giving, but they do not appear on our app. This way, our final user don't have to be scrolling through too many events, but at the same time, if we're offering, example, a premium solution, they can keep using it. Okay, thank you, Mattia. Thank you, thank you very much. So we are at the end, and uh, I only want to say thank you to the six finalists of, the, of this category. Thank you.